Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I was just thinking about this racket, and now I got one. What are the chances? Stay tuned. All right, Equator Blend, coffee sponsor of today is Kabir Dingra, K-A-B-I-R-D-H-I-N-G-R-A. Kabir writes, hi Harry and Tennis Spin team, been loving the channel recently and the content has been helping me a lot. Keep up the great work. Oh, Kabir became a member too. Thank you so much, Kabir. I appreciate you. I definitely um, need more members to hook me up with coffee on a monthly basis. And thank you for being uh, one of those people. So thank you so, so much. Um, you wouldn't believe how much I appreciate these little things. Um, if you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day or want to be a member of my coffee club, network is buy me a coffee dot com forward slash tennis spin if you want to just hook up the channel super thanks is the way link is below yeah thank you so much kabir uh, i appreciate definitely you all right so the strangest thing is i've been thinking about a wilson 2.7 hammer for about three weeks and suddenly it appeared in kind of my box it, it's kind of weird so hammer system 2.7 i remember this racket like it was yesterday so this was the first racket that had the hammer system in it and it was right after the profiles so if you remember the profiles, they had a 95 and a 110. And those were literally wide body, heavy rackets. This particular racket or racket line came out right after those. Uh, so we're talking super early 90s. Uh, and you can see how wide it is and it is tapered it's thicker in this uh, area where i'm holding it and then it it's, it remains a little thick towards the middle and thins out at the top so that you have a nice little flex but the stiffness is definitely in this part of the body of the racket so when you hit it it hammers the ball now why was it called hammer system well that is why it was called hammer system because it was like a hammer you know how you beat down a nail right now why did they do that why did they do that well first of all it made the sweet spot extend up higher it made people who didn't really play the game better how do they do that? Well, when you bring the racket back, right, if you have all the weight here, when you bring it forward, all the weight finishes up for you. So if you remember playing tennis when you first started, a lot of people went like, like kind of this. They stopped when it hit the ball because, oh, after I hit the ball, I'm not supposed to swing anymore. So a lot of the coaches know, follow through well when it's heavy in the head it helped you follow through so unlike rackets today where they brought the rackets from up here the weight down to kind of in this zone or into the handle now um, this was very unique back at that time I mean even heavy rackets were all kind of handle heavy but heavy overall so you didn't get tennis elbow. Um, I would have said, I mean, people complain about getting tennis elbow with this racket, but I feel like if you got tennis elbow from this racket, you either A, strung it like 
70 pounds and with some kind of Kevlar or there was something wrong with, you know, technique, you know, like you were wristy or you were elbowy or you were just doing something wrong because it was pretty difficult to get tennis elbow with this racket. Um, but this whole racket strung is like 10 ounces. Yes, 10 ounces. And this particular one was very unique and I liked it a lot because 95, 1820 string bed, head heavy, light, and powerful. You don't get rackets like this anymore. If you're gonna get something like this light, it's gonna be oversized. So unfortunately, uh, this is kind of a relic of the past that I kind of wish would, they would bring back because it would help a lot of you know, people's games um, and improve uh, strokes even to this day. I would think that this would work for a lot of people. Um, I'm actually excited to try this right now. Uh, <laughs> I actually, in the mid 90s, I played with the 4.0 version of this, which was not as stiff and, and, and thinner. And I think I still have one today, but um, let's go try it out. Let's bring back some memories. See you on the court. On the court, just finished up playing with the Hammer 2.7 95 though. Man, I miss this thing. Coach, I don't think you were born when this came out. Either that or you were born right when it came out. So, do you remember it? Uh, nope. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember it. The only hammer I played was, was, was the 6.2. The 6-2 hammer, I think. Um, it was like that white, red accent and black racket and that had a little bit more control than this racket. This one I felt like had a lot of power. Um, I liked it. it <laughs> Will I switch to it? Probably not. But it's definitely one of the kind of throwback to, I've never played with something that was like kind of um, the first of its kind to have such a wider frame and and kind of this stiffness too as well. Um, I think it's definitely a good racket back then, for sure. I can see how everyone preferred with this racket um, compared to a wooden racket. It's easier to play with. And uh, it's got that full bed of synthetic gut. So I think that's kind of goes well with it. So a lot of power and good control too as well with this hammer. So really cool. Let me, let me show you something real quick, coach. Let me listen to this. Doing, doing, doing. Hold yep. this for a second. Dampener. Guys, are you tired of playing against the ball machine? Ball machine always wins, and you're not really getting any interaction with people. How about playing with somebody at your level, or maybe a little bit better than you, that can improve your game? There's 27,000 people nationwide waiting for you to play with. It's all at playyourcourt.com. You can find your new tennis friend, join local leagues, all for less than $5 a month. You'll have access to players at your level, your speed, and make some new tennis friends. Check it out at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Link is below.
So this is why dampeners are like sound dampeners for rackets like this because of the hollowness of how thick this beam is. Listen. Right? Versus doing, doing, doing. It went dong, dong, dong. So it's very noticeable. So the dampener was widely used in these. Like you had to use a dampener. I, f I feel like on my 4.0, because I did play with a 4.0 version of this, I didn't use it because I just love the, the sound of Big Ben going off. Bing! But this brings back so many memories though. The thick beam, the controlled power yeah. is what I liked because controlled. they don't make rackets like this anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't make thick, right, powerful, 1820 but 95 yeah like this is an extinct species of today i'm so glad that i found this and was able to you know bring back memories of it from yesteryear but i mean if you see these around you can get them for pretty cheap and you know it's controlled power i mean it's a pain to string but it's controlled power and you know you can have one yourself for, for 1822 as well the string pattern it it doesn't feel much like an 1820 it's actually a little bit more powerful yeah right no i mean the 1820 i, I feel like kept the the ball in the court yeah and kept the strings from breaking too fast too yeah that's true. because all the thing that's moving is the strings the racket is not going to move because yeah. it's so so stiff yeah it's on like the stiffer side 2.7 sure. was their stiffest frame mm -hmm. i think maybe ever there might have been a something one thing that was lower than a 2.7 this was wilson's um own stiffness index that they rated their own rackets with mm. and i've I, there might have been a 2.0 i think there was a 2.0 wow. but in its heyday this was the stiffest racket made so all right coach thank you for hanging out with me today as always and testing out this old racket. Where can I find you, bud? You can find me at CB Chan Tennis. All right, and, and that's it. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.